and thank you for joining us today for the third of four webinars in the 2021 Revenue Cycle Improvement Bootcamp uh, with BKD. I'm Shannon Norman, Program Specialist with the National Rural Health Resource Center. Today's topic is charge capture improvements and best practices. The final session of the bootcamp is scheduled for Thursday, January 21st at 11 a.m. and will focus on patient registration. Please connect your video feature by selecting the camera icon in the lower left corner of your screen. Your audio is muted by default. To avoid background noise and feedback, please remain muted unless you have a question. To unmute your line, please select the microphone in the lower left corner of your screen, or if you called in, you can unmute by using star six. You can also communicate via the chat box, which is located on the bottom ribbon in the middle of your screen. Please take a moment to type your name and organization in the chat box so we know who's joining us today. So in addition to the annual Revenue Cycle Improvement Bootcamp, the center has compiled Revenue Cycle Improvement resources. A few key resources include the Best Practice Concepts and Revenue Cycle Management Guide and a compilation of tools included in the Rural Hospital Toolkit for transitioning to value-based systems. Following this four-part series, the program is offering follow-up one-on-one coaching calls with BKD consultants. So please contact me, Shannon Norman, if your staff could use additional assistance with specific coding and billing questions. Before we get started, we have two pre-polling questions. Caleb, please pull up the polls. Thanks, Shannon. And the first question is, billing is the only department responsible for charge capture, true or false? And number two, documentation plays no part in effective charge capture, true or false? All right, thanks everyone for participating in the polls. Next slide, please. Our speaker today is Stacy G, Managing Consultant with BKD. Stacy has experience in project management engagements that include managing denials, managing department assessments, and assisting facilities with development and reorganizational structure. She also has experience in managing charge master implementation projects, performing revenue cycle assessments, and providing business office and department staff trainings. Stacy has also assisted facilities in developing and training revenue integrity departments to improve physician documentation and enhance revenue opportunities. In addition to her experience as a healthcare consultant, she has served in the capacity of claims processing and billing specialist with a healthcare provider and several years in long-term care, providing skilled nursing facility billing services and managerial functions. Stacy is a certified outpatient coder, certified pharmacy technician, and certified revenue cycle representative. I'll now turn things over to Stacy to get us started. Stacy. Good morning. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate that. We're just going to jump right in, um, and we will probably have some time at the end of the webinar, maybe for some questions. And so we're just going to dive in. So we're going to talk about. Um, the importance of charge capture opportunities. Uh, we'll go through some of the processes of the charge capture and then the benefits of a charge reconciliation program. So if you think about why is it important to capture all charges? We need to tell our story to our payers. If you think about the claim form, the CPT codes that you uh, place on those claim forms, tell the payer what you did to that patient while they were in your care. The diagnosis codes that appear on the claim form tell the payer why you did what you did to the patient. So we really want to tell them the whole story and the care that took place uh, from the minute that patient enters your facility uh, and up until their discharge. And we use the claim form to kind of tell our story. It's also important that you report all procedures and treatments that are done as the data that you report on your claim forms are also reflected in your cost reports. And as evidenced by the polling, it looks like everybody has a pretty good understanding of the charge capture uh, process doesn't belong to just one or two uh, areas of the department. It's really um, uh, important that everyone knows that charge capture isn't just a function that billing does, or it's not just a function that coding does. And ownership for charge capture and charge reconciliation should begin in the department where the services took place. We'll look at the processes of charge capture and the importance of charge reconciliation as we progress through the webinar. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are the benefits of a healthy revenue cycle? So when you think of charge master, charge master is a component of a healthy revenue cycle program. 
And uh, having a good, healthy revenue cycle program will help you uh, reduce leakage, preserve your revenue. Um, it will also help improve your compliance uh, while working to reduce risk. And then um, just having, as a whole, uh, organizational confidence in your revenue cycle. So we'll just kind of tackle that a little bit. Okay, next slide. Okay, so you can't really talk about um, charge capture without talking about um, revenue cycle. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to speak to every bullet that is on this particular slide because honestly, we could do probably do uh, an hour webinar, webinar for almost every one of these individual components. Um, but I want to point out where the charge capture uh, portion resides in the revenue integrity department. It falls into the middle section of the revenue cycle, um, which is that second column there that's listed under the revenue integrity bullet. There are a lot of moving pieces uh, to the revenue integrity portion, and it does require uh, input and effort from almost all of the ancillary departments of a hospital or a clinic. A next slide, please. And it looks like we've already done this polling question. Okay, the revenue integrity, next slide. So again, uh, as we talk about revenue integrity, according to the National Association of Healthcare Revenue Integrity, the goal of revenue integrity, revenue integrity is to prevent recurrences of issues that can cause revenue leakage, uh, and or compliance risk. Um, we do this through effective, efficient, replicable processes and internal controls across the continuum of patient care, which also has to be supported by appropriate documentation and uh, using the application of sound financial practices uh, that can withstand any kind of audit that you may get at any point in time. And contributing to a successful RI program is charge capture and charge reconciliation. So as we kind of talk through these elements of the revenue integrity, you can kind of see charge captures at really uh, the beginning piece. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're capturing charges, whether it's an office visit, a home visit, procedures, bedside visits, and so forth. Okay, next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay, so charge capture effectiveness. Um, does your facility have a current charge capture policy or process in place? Um, clearly defined roles and responsibilities for charge capture should be in place. Without these processes in place, it's, it's very challenging to assess performance or to identify where or how to make any type of improvements. So we highly recommend that you have a charge capture policy in place. Secondly, does your facility have a formal charge capture leadership team to review and identify gaps in your charge capture process? Does this team include multi-disciplinary uh, team members? So consider developing a quality initiative to review and identify charge capture gaps and processes for improvement. Uh, many facilities have initiated a team approach to focus their efforts on charge capture. And it does help to have uh, a multidisciplinary team just so uh, the process can be reviewed or looked at by various um, set of eyes in the various departments. Do you perform charge capture audits in clinical areas? If so, how often? And again, are there multi disciplinary team members involved uh, for feedback. So, you know, routine charge capture audits can provide uh, a great insight into the charge capture environment, looking at the various processes such as charge creation, billing, coding, et cetera. We typically recommend uh, in the beginning to perform monthly audits um, as you identify trends, um, you can work through the process of identifying those trends, the root causes, 
um, identify and develop and implement some process improvements. And once you feel that that process is working uh, well, then you could probably move your audits to a quarterly um, time frame. How are missed and or late charges identified? Uh, missed charges can be identified through your charge capture audits, reviewing documentation, orders, results could identify gaps. You want to analyze your claims data for incorrect or missing charges. Look for breakdowns um, due to either incorrect charges or codes in the charge master. Codes change routinely. When those changes happen, are you aware? What about late charges? Does anyone at your facility generate late charge reports and share with the department managers? Um, late charges really should be reviewed weekly and efforts taken to identify trends and opportunities for improvements. And many systems uh, will generate uh, late charge reports and um, have them automated where they, they go out automatically to department managers at midnight or seven in the morning, whatever the, the case may be. But there are various reports that many of the systems can generate that will help identify late charges. And then what kind of education processes do you have in place for charge entry and billing uh, for both the clinical staff and the charge master um, staff? So, if you think about education and knowledge share, that's kind of critical to maintain a successful charge capture program. Any person who is responsible for documenting services, procedures, treatments, even patient care should be receiving continuous education uh, when and if those CPT or HCPCS codes change. Think about your documentation template. When's the last time your docu documentation templates have been updated or revised. So just thinking about education, it's really not just um, something that the CDM manager or gatekeeper uh, should be receiving. It really should be rolled out across the facility to anybody that has their hands at all in any type of charge entry or charge capture process. Okay, next slide. So charge capture opportunities. Again, we want to educate the clinical staff um, to utilize the system to its full functionality. You know, let, let your, your system do the heavy lifting. Make sure that there's documentation templates in there and that the order screens uh, reflect everything that needs to be documented and captured. And daily charge capture processes should be performed. There, we always recommend that you have a dedicated staff position or positions. You will need a backup. If you have one person trained, you're going to need a backup when that person goes on vacation or something happens and they're, they're not there. But we do recommend daily charges uh, be entered. And then making sure that there's integration between your modules, making sure that your MAR and your EMR and your lab uh, modules and your radiology modules, they all talk to each other and there's not missing gaps. Uh, documentation templates, again, um, as codes change, sometimes the intent of the codes change. So looking at those documentation templates, making sure that those are updated and revised and are current. And then going back to the daily charge entry um, ownership and responsibility of, of daily charges really should be uh, placed upon the department from where the charge um, is initiated. Uh, and now I know there's going to be uh, different circumstances where coding is going to code maybe the surgical cases or maybe the endo cases. Uh, but when you think about supplies and drugs, uh, bedside procedures, those are the things that, that really should be initiated by the department uh, as they're happening. And then identify opportunities to automate. Like I said, let, the, let your systems do the heavy lifting for you. Create those documentations. Um, 
start stop times for infusions can be automated. Uh, some systems have what they call the gas gauge um, that will indicate um, you've entered a stop time for an infusion, but you've missed the stop time. So let those systems do the heavy lifting for you. Okay, next slide. Thank you. So there's a lot of areas uh, where we can talk about capturing some charges. You wanna make sure that you're capturing charges for observation hours. Make sure you have the physician order. Is someone in your facility validating the observations order uh, hours? Is someone reviewing the observation carve outs? You wanna make sure that you're identifying those carve out procedures and treatments you do not want to run the risk of over-reporting your observation hours. Infusions and injections. Make sure your start-stop times are documenting. Uh, you utilize technology to help capture this critical information. You don't want to have to downcode um, to an injection because the stop time isn't documented on an infusion. So document, document, document. Uh, same thing with your drug administration uh, and your drugs, making sure that, you know, if you administer a vaccine that you've got that administration code captured as well as the drug. So just stepping back and kind of looking at everything that happens uh, and making sure you document and capture the charge for it. Bedside procedures. Um, you know, after you... After you define what's included in a room rate for an inpatient room, kind of review what services remained. Um, so consider using outpatient procedures as a guide to determine whether a service meets uh, your definition of what is and what is included in the room charge. Uh, procedures like lumbar punctures or paracentesis, uh, insertion of Foley caths, to clotting implanted vascular access devices. Some of those procedures that are done bedside, particularly in an observation um, arena that uh, the nurses are assisting those providers when doing those bedside procedures. Those are the things that you wanna document and capture. And then your applicable medical surgical supplies. Um, there's a very high dollar implant items um, that are used in orthopedic. You wanna make sure that you're reporting those supplies and you're reporting those supplies with an applicable HCPCS code. Making sure that those get onto the claim with a HCPCS code and a revenue code that identifies it as such. And then any of the clinical tests that may be happening uh, to those patients while they're there. Okay, next slide. So again, we're gonna talk a little bit about education. Uh, ongoing education should take place for all staff who enter patient charges or services, um, CDM staff who's responsible for adding or revising service lines to the CDM. Uh, think about those physicians and those clinicians that are responsible, responsible for documenting patient services, making sure that the documentation is there that the documentation is deliberate and the documentation can support a charge. Um, and then also your managed care and your payer contract teams, um, those people that work with your payers and um, work to establish and create those payers. Um, you wanna keep them well informed of what's happening with charges as they change and or get revised. Um, because CPT codes, HCPCS codes, you know, they literally can change one or two words in the description and it totally changes the intent of the code. So just making sure that as those codes change, um, the appropriate departments are pulled into those conversations um, and you have a discussion about, is this still an appropriate code? Do we need to add codes? Do we need to delete codes? So we typically recommend um, you know, the last quarter of the year as the new codes are coming out, the new CPT codes and HCPCS codes, that your CDM um, 
gatekeeper, if you will, steps back, looks at all those changes and kind of breaks it out by the different areas. So these are all the radiology charges that are gonna be changed or deleted or added. These are all the lab charges that are gonna be changed, deleted or added. And then sitting down, scheduling some time with those individual departments and sitting down and just going through those changes and making sure that everybody has a clear understanding of what needs to go into the charge master, what needs to be inactivated in the charge master and just making sure that all the applicable charges um, that they may need are there for them to choose. And the same kind of goes for the billing staff. They need to be made aware of uh, changes. Um, you know, some payers want a CPT code. Uh, other payers may want a HICPIC code instead of a CPT code. So just making sure that that education and that communication happens uh, from the CDM point of view to anybody else in your facility that may have any kind of um, input to charge capture. Okay, next slide. And we've already done this polling question. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, charge capture and charge reconciliation. There is a difference. So charge capture, again, is something that um, should be done on a daily basis. Uh, and it should be a process that's done by the department initiating the patient charge. Um, you also want to look again at how often do you have late charges? Is that a process within your department that can be streamlined? Is there uh, any visibility to those late charges? Are you just totally in the dark? You have no idea what's going on. Nobody's ever told you that you have late charges. So these are kind of conversations that you need to have with someone in your uh, finance department to help you identify late charges. And then making sure that your CDM is updated, both the service lines as well as the process. So again, making sure that you can get those charges in it in on a daily basis um, and making sure that those charges are correct. So then we flip to charge reconciliation. And this is a process where you're not only validating that there is a charge, but that the charge is correct. Because um, it's very easy to look at uh, a report that maybe is your charges that have been posted, just to scan down it and say, yep, yeah, I see charges, those look good. What you really want to do is you want to compare um, your schedule or your appointment or maybe your attended visits um, against the charges that have been posted. So you want to validate that the patient is correct. You want to validate that the charge unit is correct. And you also want to look at the dollar amount and make sure it doesn't look way, way out of whack. Uh, an example that I have is um, there was a physical therapy department, and, not, and I'm not picking on physical therapy. There was a physical therapy department that was going through the process of doing their charge reconciliation every day. Um, but they kind of got a little lapsed in their process and what should have been a $90 charge crossed over to the claim as a $900 charge because they just simply looked down and said, um, Stacy G was here. Yes, we see she had services rendered and we see a charge, but they did not notice that someone had invertedly put $900 charge in there versus a $90 charge. So you kind of want to make sure and look at all of the detail behind the charges, making sure it's correct, making sure that the unit is correct, and making sure that the dollar amount is correct, because it can have a huge impact. Okay, next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, can we go back? I apologize. I did not talk about this um, grid that you see on the slide. This is just a copy uh, or a snippet of a weekly log uh, that we created for a charge reconciliation process. Um, and this particular client wanted us to create some sort of tracking tool for their department managers um, to use as a charge reconciliation. So we created this log 
and they literally filled it out every day. This log was good for a week. So if you look down at A1, um, they confirmed that the patient is correct. Uh, A2, that the total number of tests or procedures was correct and that the revenue is correct. Um, and then down at the bottom, the same, it's kind of a double check, just making sure that the total charges and the type of charges are reasonable. Um, if they see something that just doesn't, doesn't look right, these are kind of cues to just make sure, hey, look at those patients that have where the charge may look too low. Let's, let's go back and look at the detail behind that. Same thing if they notice something that an account had an unusually high charge attached to it, just digging into the detail and the same thing with the volumes. So they asked us to create this tracking tool for them. Um, and they had an assigned position uh, to do these uh, daily charge reconciliations. So you've got Monday through Sunday and the Revenue Integrity Department uh, director requested that each one of the ancillary departments fill out this weekly log for their daily charge reconciliation and turn it into him. Um, I think he had a like at 8 a.m. on Monday morning, he wanted that charge, this charge report uh, from the previous week. And they became very, um, I don't want to say aggressive, but they, they really put focused efforts into making sure the departments were completing this log. And as they, as the departments kind of worked through this log, different things would kind of bubble to light. They would See, oh, where we're consistently missing a charge when we do this type of procedure, or we're consistently getting units wrong when we're doing this type of procedure. So it really kind of was a good tool for them to use to identify trends within their own departments. And then they would work on those trends and work to get some sort of resolution uh, to prevent um, you know, lost charges or late charges. So this is just a snippet of the log that we created to help this particular facility. Okay, next slide. So again, just reiterating charge reconciliation. Again, you should have a dedicated staff uh, position or, or positions to do the charge reconciliation. It's always good to have a backup. Um, we always suggest that you compare your schedule or your appointment ledger, whatever is in your particular um, department module um, that helps you track um, how many patients you saw and what, what happened to those patients on the daily basis to the posted charges that have been entered. So really getting a, getting a report probably from finance that shows you all the charges that were posted for a specific time frame, and then going back and comparing that to your schedule or your apartment uh, appointment ledge, making sure that everything looks right. And again, validating those correct that it is the correct patient that has the charge, and it is the correct charge uh, for that patient, and that that is the correct dollar amount for those charges. Okay, next slide. Best practices for charge capture reconciliation. Next slide. Okay, so we've kind of talked about um, the charge capture processes and maybe what should be put in place. And I'm just going to kind of summarize kind of what we've talked about. And these are really the keys to having a successful charge capture charge reconciliation program. So data, you know, data um, is your friend. Run those analysis look at those late charges, perform those routine audits. You wanna review claims for incorrect and or missing charges. Um, by doing these routine audits, you're gonna be able to identify areas where there may be potential gaps, whether it's uh, in the charge creation process, maybe it's in the billing process, the coding process, but if you use your data to really drill down uh, it's going to just give you a wealth of information and it will point you to some starting points or beginning points as you kind of start through your charge reconciliation process. 
Um, and also with the data, you can identify root causes of missing and or late charges. So looking at a claim and seeing that they had a surgical procedure done, they had a total knee done, but yet you don't see the supply. You don't see um, that very expensive orthopedic implant that was used. So identifying, you know, is there a gap there? What's going on there? So the data is very helpful when you want to uh, really dig in and hone hone in on on uh, maybe some missing or incorrect charges, and then educate and governance. You want to provide that ongoing education for the clinical staff, the physicians as well, and the CDM staff as well. Uh, create multidisciplinary teams to review, identify, and develop a plan of action for those identified gaps and opportunities. Again, uh, the reason it's so important to bring uh, different people to the table is um, sometimes you're working in your department, you've got your head down, you're working, and you're so focused on what you're, you're doing um, that you don't see anything outside that picture. You don't see what happens once those charges leave your department and they go down the line for whoever needs to touch it next. So bringing those extra set of eyes to the table and really identifying the process from start to finish, that's how you're really going to be able to identify, hey, uh, you know, I'm always putting this charge code on when we do this type of procedure. What may, what may be happening down the line of the, the charge progression is uh, when that data leaves your department, it may go to coding and coding says, well, wait a minute, that's not really the correct CPT code. So they may change it. And then as it leaves coding, goes to billing, billing may go, well, wait a minute, that doesn't really look right. Or the payer says, we're not really going to pay that particular code. We're going to remove that code. So what you think may be going out the door is good data. Somebody else behind you may be, may be manipulating it or removing it or correcting it or revising it. So bringing all of those different people to the table, you can walk, <clears throat> walk through those processes and make sure that everybody's on that same page and just identifying those opportunities. And again, departmental ownership. Uh, it's, it's important that those, uh, late charges, missed charges, uh, incorrect charges, that all starts with the department managers and making sure that um, everything looks good from their point of view. And uh, it, it really truly is a department ownership function. It's not, oh, well, billing will take care of that for me, or, oh, I know coding will fix it for me. The ownership really needs to begin in, in within your own department. And then systems optimization. Again, allow your systems to do the heavy lifting. Um, it, making sure that your documentation templates are correct. Making sure that there are reports there that can help you identify gaps or um, something's wrong. Or it, it, when you do this, this charge is always dropping and it's an incorrect charge. So just making sure that the the systems will do the heavy lifting, making sure that, you know, you've got to put good data in, you've got to have good current documentation templates and just making sure everything is updated um, routinely. And then prevention, you know, perform, performing the charge reconciliation on a daily basis is really uh, the beginning point of, of prevention for lost charges or late charges, um, making sure that those charges are entered, making sure that someone has reconciled that, understanding that, you know, charge charge entry and charge reconciliation may not be able to happen on the same day. You, you may do your daily charges today through the end of the day, and then someone in the morning comes along behind you and does the charge reconciliation piece to make sure um, what was entered today is there tomorrow. Uh, because many times the charges won't post until midnight, um, depending on a system that you have. And then just developing and uh, monitoring your key performance metrics. You want to, um, again, with this multidisciplinary team, um, 
You can also create a denials management team separate from a charge capture charge reconciliation team, and then you can work together. But really developing uh, key uh, performance, uh, you wanna look at those accounts or those claims that may have coding uh, and charge related denials. Um, your denials tool or denials reporting from your financial systems can also give a lot of insight as to what's happening uh, with charges. Uh, you want to look at those charge related edits, which may again may be um, Blue Cross Blue Shield may want a HICPIC code, whereas Medicare wants a CPT code, or vice versa. So just making sure that all that data is right based on the payer requirements. You want to look at your charge lag days. Um, you know, if if you have seven to 10 days before you're getting charges in it from the date of service or from the date of discharge. That is a long time. Um, and uh, if there's something that's causing such a, a large lag, then we need to look at the processes and see if something can be streamlined where those charges aren't sitting out there or um, just hanging out there for somebody to enter. And then again, your late charges, using reports from your financial system to identify late charges. And again, that kind of goes back to the charge lag days, just making sure, you know, I know a lot of systems uh, and facilities uh, have a, a certain number of days that they will allow charges to be entered from the discharge date. Um, I, I think that the shortest time um, that I've seen is three days, three three days from the date of service up to um, seven days, which is a long time. So just understanding what's happening in your department, understanding the workflows, is there areas or processes that can be streamlined to make sure that you're getting those charges entered on a timely basis. Um, okay, next slide. Okay, so this is kind of a summary of, of what we've already gone over. We wanna conduct those internal routine audits for missing and or late charges. Education, I know I've talked a lot about education, but it cannot be overstated. It's very important that everybody um, that has a piece of pie in the charge capture and the charge reconciliation process are educated. They have an understanding when CPT codes change, they have an understanding that their documentation has to be deliberate, it needs to be um, complete, and the documentation has to be able to support a charge that's going on to that claim. And then you wanna monitor your KPIs and you wanna track your successes. So as you uh, work together as a team on your charge capture and your charge reconciliation team, uh, you know, create a tracker, an Excel spreadsheet, that's something to help you track. We identified this trend. Um, these are the steps that we took to resolve the issue. Um, and then if you see something similar happening in, in a different department, it may be along the same lines. And you just want to make sure that um, you know, you're watching for those trends, but also track those successes and work closely with the denials management team. Uh, if you have a denials management team in your facility, work closely with them as well. Uh, having both a charge capture, charge rec, and a denials team uh, really is a good uh, proactive option for making sure that you're not missing any charges, you're reconciling your charges, um, and that everything is, is coming across to a clean claim as it should be. Okay, next slide. Oh, we're to the end. Um, do we have time for questions and answers or is that an option? Yeah, we do. Thank you, Stacy. And I see one came through the chat box, but just before we get to that, I wanna take a moment to um, pull up the post polling questions. And while Caleb's pulling those up, I'll just give everyone a reminder that the recording and slides from today's webinar will be available online. Caleb will be emailing them out upon completion of the four-part bootcamp. 
So we have everybody just another minute here. I like that. Yeah, that's certainly good to see. Well, thank you. Um, and thanks for pulling those up, Caleb. And we had one question come in from Denise. I'll read that to you, Stacy. She said, nurse visits for vaccine administration with no provider visit. Can more than just a vaccine administration code be charged? Can a low level ENM be charged for the nurse history assessment and monitoring after the vaccine? And then she follows up with additional information. This will be for a mass outpatient community COVID vaccine administration clinic. Um, I do believe there is an appropriate, um, and I think it's a Q code. I would have to go back and research, but I do believe there is an appropriate uh, Q code. Hicks. It may be a G code. I'm sorry, I, I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I do believe there is an appropriate HICPIC code that can be reported for those types of services that she's talking about. And I would okay. be glad to look that up. And do I send that information to you, Shannon? Yeah, that would be great. And then I can okay. forward it along to Denise. Perfect. I will look that up and send that information back. Thank you. Sure. And if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box. Otherwise, feel free to unmute. If you called in, just a reminder at star six to unmute your phone line. Well, I don't see any questions coming in at this time. If anyone comes up with questions or your teams have questions following the webinar today, as a reminder, we will be offering those one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me if that's something your team is interested in. And Stacy, I wanna thank you for your time today. Thanks everyone for joining us. And we hope to see you all for our session on Thursday regarding patient registration. Thank you very much, appreciate it.